You have probably run across the famous Fibonacci sequence, but you may not be familiar with all the super cool patterns and identities that arise from it. In this video, we want to show you one of our favorite, less commonly discussed identities and give a little intuition around why it occurs. The identity we're going to be looking at arises when you take two adjacent Fibonacci numbers, square them, and add them together. Try it out and see what happens. For example, we could take 2 squared and add it to 3 squared, or we could take 3 squared and add it to 5 squared. When we list the results of adding the squared Fibonacci's, something amazing happens. We see that each result is another Fibonacci number. However, the process only produces half the Fibonacci numbers. And check out what that means when we look at the indices of the Fibonacci on a given line. The line with the third and fourth Fibonacci numbers results in the seventh Fibonacci number. Adding the indices on the left tells you which Fibonacci number will result on the right. That's so cool! Take a moment to pause and ponder the beauty and mystery here. What explains this pattern? Can you find a demonstration or proof that satisfies your curiosity? Okay, here's what we came up with. If we break 21 into its smaller Fibonacci components and stack them next to each other, it starts an iterative process where we keep slicing the extra dots off the top and stacking them up on the right. This is a really cool pattern that starts to shed a little light on the situation. Here's the same thing again for 34, and start to pay attention to how many rows we slice off each time. Now let's look at the same process with 21 again, and keep track of the width at each stage. As the height decreases, the width increases, and here's the magic. Both are Fibonacci numbers the whole time. Okay, so let's put it all together. We're breaking apart our Fibonacci number into two rectangular parts. We can do this in many different ways, but the key point is that all the dimensions remain Fibonacci numbers the whole time. We like to call this Fibonacci decomposition because we're decomposing the Fibonacci numbers into component parts. If you didn't know, there are not only positive Fibonacci numbers, but negative ones as well. Here's what they look like. And Fibonacci decomposition even works when extended past zero in the negative Fibonacci numbers. So, how does all this tie into the sums of those squares in the beginning? Let's take another look at the Fibonacci decomposition for 34. Oh look! Squares! When the dimensions of the rectangles happen to coincide, you have the sum of two square Fibonacci numbers. Notice that this only happens with odd number Fibonacci's. See if you can use Fibonacci decomposition to explain why it's only the odd-numbered Fibonacci's that can be decomposed into the sum of two squares. Then, can you discover a slightly different relationship between Fibonacci squares that is revealed by decomposing the even-numbered Fibonacci's? At the very end of this video, while we roll through the credits, we'll show the answer to that second puzzle. So be careful not to let us spoil it for you. We wouldn't want to steal your thunder. 
All this started with seeing what happens when we square two Fibonacci numbers and add them together, but it has led us to learn about Fibonacci decomposition, and in fact, we actually stumbled across the ideas in this video when exploring an even larger pattern that this is just a tiny portion of.